I'm Katrina Zish for Houdini.com, and joining me is Anne Plachette Murphy, parenting expert and author of The Seven Stages of Motherhood. Nice to see you, Anne. Thanks. We're talking about how parents should break news to their children that one of them is seriously ill, say, for example, with cancer. What's the right time to do it? How do you do it based on their ages? Uh, so it's a big topic, but let's start first with how to tell it to younger children. Well, children who are younger really don't need a lot of detailed information. In other words, a kid up to, let's say, seven or eight can be told that mom or dad has cancer, what kind of cancer it is, and what part of the body it's in. And most importantly, they want to know that their lives won't be affected in a very dramatic way at first, that mom or dad is doing everything he or she can to take care of this, that there are lots of different kinds of cancer, and that a lot of them are treatable and that you can take medicine or get help to get better. Um, if they say to you, you know, are you going to die? I think that's a question that all parents dread when they're diagnosed with cancer. And I think it's very important to say, you know, that's, that's a really um, important question. I don't have all the answers, but I know that right now the doctor says I'm going to get better and I'm going to do everything to get better. But what little children really need to feel is that the routines will be respected, that their lives are not going to be turned upside down. And as a parent who actually is ill or who does have cancer, is it difficult to then maintain that same routine? Or do you think that's actually helpful for the parent who is ill? It's very important to maintain routines when you have young children because that is what makes them feel safe. And of course, if you can't do everything you used to do with your child, you're going to find other things. You know, if you used to play baseball with your little boy and you can't, you can read a book about baseball, you can watch baseball, you can do a lot of things that maybe you didn't do when you weren't sick and you weren't home more. And so you have to you know, take advantage of some of the opportunities it may provide for you to connect with your kids. I, I think that you can't expect everything to be just as it was, including the fact that if you get upset, that's okay. It's really okay for even a young child to be told, mommy's sad and she's a little scared, but she'll be fine in a minute. And I think a lot of kids are so empathic and you're surprised at how much even a young child can come through for you. What about the teenagers? Because they're obviously very focused on themselves at that time in their lives. They're very uh, focused on, on their sports, on their girlfriends or boyfriends. How do you break it to them? Because you really are intruding on a time that is really about them. Well, I think for teenagers, and, and frankly, this is true for all kids, what you don't want is to have secrets because kids will pick up on the fact that something's wrong. You know, kids have very sharp antennas. Is that any age? Yes, that's really any age. And in fact, an important point is that little kids, if they sense that something's wrong, will tend to blame themselves. They'll think they did something wrong. It's very important to tell a young child that cancer isn't contagious, that they didn't cause it. Uh, this is something that kids often think. So that's very important for the young ones. Teenagers are very self-absorbed. So you can't necessarily expect them to be really empathic. Oh, what can I do? They're going to want to go meet their boyfriend or girlfriend and do what they've already done. They also may be feeling a lot of anger and resentment that this is going to intrude on their lives. And that's something that as a parent, if you can accept that and understand it, it's going to make it a lot easier. It must be very difficult to have a member of your family seeming to not support you. So how do you handle that as a parent and not become resentful, perhaps, or angry with your teenager? That's a great question. You have to, first of all, be willing at times to, to say to your kid, look, I know that this is how you're feeling. I really need you right now to come through for me in X, Y, and Z ways. And the more specific you can be, the better. You know, I, I need you, if your kid's driving, I need you to drive me to the doctor. Sometimes teenagers need to be included and made to feel they're part of the team. Otherwise, it's much easier for them to just opt out and split and really make you feel that they don't care. Empowering them then can help everybody involved. Absolutely. Now, how do you tell children and or teenagers enough about what you're going through without scaring them too much? Well, I think that, frankly, one of the things you have to emphasize is that cancer is not um, a death sentence, that there are hundreds of different kinds of cancers. Some of them are very treatable. And so if you can honestly say to your child, look, there are 
so many advances that this is not serious or this is serious but we're doing X, Y, and Z. That's very comforting. And I think the other thing is to make sure that their lives are as consistent and stable and predictable as they've always been. What if the illness does progress to a more advanced stage and it may potentially not be curable. How do you then tell these children who you were saying, mommy or daddy is working their hardest, we're doing everything we can, the doctor says we'll be okay, and then you end up not being okay? How do you broach then that very unfortunate next step? Families approach illness and they certainly approach death in very different ways. I mean, I think if you, for example, as a family have very strong religious beliefs about what happens after you die, that's a time when, as a family, you need to put into practice the kinds of rituals and the kinds of conversations that really are consistent with your values. Uh, it's very important, no matter what stage you're in in an illness, to be as honest with your kids as possible. It's also important to take your cue from them. If they're not asking a lot of questions, you don't have to feel obligated to, to really bombard them with all of this information. I think that if a child is, in fact, seemingly you know, ignorant of what's going on, you, but you have, you have to be sensitive to you know, filling them in enough because they may not ask a lot of questions. But when they ask questions, one of the most important responses, and this is true with a lot of tough topics, is what do you think the answer is? And see where they're coming from. And Pushet Murphy, thank you so much for your insight. Thanks.